Good morning and welcome to online worship from the studio audience of Epiphany Lutheran Church in Richmond, Virginia. My name is Pastor Philip Martin and happy to be uh, leading us all in worship today. Um, I can't speak for Pastor Joseph, uh, who will be on camera here in a second, but I can say that I never went into ministry wanting to be a tele-evangelist. Uh, but here I am, and the times are calling for it. Um, we're happy to be able to have this technology and the people uh, who can help us uh, produce this and uh, get this worship into, into your homes or wherever it is that you are watching. But uh, we're going to be playing it pretty much by ear. I'm, I'm used to being able to speak out and, and kind of look out on Sunday mornings and see faces and, and respond to people and, and take attendance. Uh, and see who's here, and um, I'm just kidding, kind of. Um, but uh, we are glad uh, to have you here today. So be patient as we as we as we walk through this liturgy today. Uh, we mailed to our members a copy of the bulletin that we will be using. Uh, and if you didn't get that email because you're not a member, that's fine. You can go to our website, and it is downloadable from the front page of our website. Just scroll down and there's a link that says bulletin for March 15th. You don't need to have the bulletin because we're going to lead you through the worship, but that is there for you if you like it. Um, we are uh, going to try to make this a, a more brief uh, worship service than a normal Sunday morning. There will not be Holy Communion. Um, so uh, we know that nobody else has anything else to do today, so we're just going to kind of enjoy ourselves. Uh, um, but thank you for listening to us. We're not in the sanctuary because we tried worshiping or tried recording in the sanctuary yesterday, and uh, the sound just was not very good. And so we, we are here in a makeshift worship studio, uh, actually in our new parlor area, uh, that's part of the renovations and expansion that we did are doing this year. Um, and lastly, I would just like to say that helping us today, if Pastor Joseph will be leading some worship, we have Kevin Barger, our music director, on uh, on the organ. We have uh, Turner Barger, um, Marcus Groner behind one of the cameras. We also have uh, Mike Dunavant, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Pastor Joseph, uh, Matthew Barger, and Jake Barger. So thank you for joining us. <clears throat> we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who is present, who gives life, who creates all that is, seen and unseen. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over our sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your life of resurrection and promise. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn, O Jesus, joy of loving hearts, the words will be displayed for you.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O merciful God, in the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff in which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his sin, son, death of his <clears throat> son most, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Let your steadfast 
The Holy Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have five had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What, will, what you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming... And is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am He, the one who is speaking to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. <clears throat> well, I invite all of our boys and girls and children to gather around as we have a little time of children's sermon. And we'll begin by singing the song that we always sing together on Sundays. <clears throat> we could be face to face with each other this morning, I, I bet one question you may have um, is, can I see you? I cannot see you. You can see us. Um, but we look forward to a time when we can be back with each other face to face. Um, until then, um, things are going to be a little different. Um, you know, a lot of us will be staying home to work if we're adults, and children will be staying home from school. And that's just going to be a thing that we'll have to, to learn about together. <clears throat> and in our family, one of the things we're thinking about is how are we going to organize our time? And what are the days going to look like? And how are we going to plan to make the most of this time together? Um, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to have a daily calendar. And so every day we're going to start the day with circle time. And we're going to think about, well, now what are we going to be doing today? Let's get prepared for that kind of together. We're going to have time to go outside and play. We're going to have time that we read books. 
or we're going to have time that, um, that we take a rest. You know, we're going to have all kinds of time. Um, and one of the things we said as our little family that we wanted to do is that we wanted to end the day by sharing highs and lows. What's the best thing that happened to me? Or what's the worst thing that happened to me? Or what's a good thing that happened to me? What's a bad thing that happened to me? And kind of spend some time connecting with each other and just, just making sure we know what's going on with each other. Um, you know, my low for today is that we can't be together face to face. But my high is uh, that there is a way that we can be together. And I know that we will be together again. And I know that um, because of God's love and because of our friendship, we're still connected. Um, in our story from the Bible today, we heard about Jesus and how he met a woman at a well, a place that people used to go to get something to drink when they were very thirsty. And Jesus knew everything about this woman we hear in this story. He knew all of her highs, and he knew all of her lows, and he knew her whole life story, even though they had just met. And it's so much so that she runs back to tell all her friends and family, come and meet the man who told me everything I've ever done. Come meet the man who knows all my highs and all my lows. And that's true for us, that, that Jesus knows your highs and your lows, knows how you feel, knows about your day, um, and is with you through it all. And so when we pray to God, we can, we can tell those things to Him, even though He already knows them, and trust that that's a way that He brings us closer. So I would encourage you guys, you know, when you're at home, ask mom and dad if you can share your highs and lows. Um, so that you can connect with each other. Um, and then have a prayer and ask God um, to just be with you through all, all these times. And I'd like to have a prayer with you right now. So let us bow our heads and we'll pray together. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, Jesus thank you for loving me. Thank, thank you for loving me. And knowing everything about me. And, and knowing everything about me. About me. Be with me. Be with, with me. me. Give me courage. Give, give me courage. courage. And peace. And peace. And all that I need today. And, and all that I need today. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The next thing we're going to do together is sing a song called You Fill My Soul with Your Living Water. We've heard about how Jesus promises us living water. Let me show you how this song goes. We start here at the chorus and it goes, You fill my soul with your living water and I am your child. Let's all sing that together. You fill my soul with your living water we go back to the chorus. At the very end, we'll sing a sort of bridge that goes like this. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing to the Lord. Let's sing that together. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing to the Lord. Let's sing this song together.
I've been thinking about how these are really unprecedented times. I don't think anybody alive today, at least that I know or that is in this country I'm aware of, has ever been on such a large-scale breakdown, uh, kind of lockdown of society. We're not going to schools. We're not going. Many of us not going to workplaces. People can't watch sports. Um, so much has changed, um, and we're all getting ready to uh, push off this, this coronavirus by doing our part and hunkering down. I think, as I've racked my brain, the only thing I can kind of compare this to is when my family has had to get ready for hurricanes in the past. Uh, we've been living here in Virginia for several years, and I grew up in North Carolina, so I know a little bit about the rush on certain bare necessities in the, in the marketplaces and, and places like the grocery store. Uh, about several years ago, I, I'm not really sure when it was, I think it was Hurricane Matthew, um, we thought it was going to hit Virginia, and so everybody started to stockpile things, and uh, my wife went out and uh, bought um, a whole bunch of water, actually, um, and I know this, I know this because we still have the water she bought. Um, we ended up, uh, the, the hurricane didn't come here, and uh, but that water sat out in our, in our shed, and... Uh, I have some today, brought it in, um, spring water, Publix brand, I think this is uh, from about four years ago, uh, it's a little dusty, um, and believe it or not, I was checking it, it actually says, best if used by February 2020, so we just missed this. Uh, um, by the coronavirus by one month. Um, but I, you know, I've always wanted to know what expired water tastes like. So, um, <laughs> everybody wants to try it with me, but uh, um, it doesn't have much of a, a smell. But... <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, thankful for, for the ability to, of course, store, store things that we might need. If, this year it hasn't been water that people are stockpiling, um, but apparently toilet paper is the hot <laughs> item. So, um, but we hear this morning, we hear this morning in this conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman that he gives water that has no expiration date. He gives water that does not go bad. That the water that comes from Jesus even the people who are thirsty when they drink from it will never want to drink anywhere else again. They'll never be thirsty. Uh, this is one of the most endearing and provocative scenes in all of Scripture. Jesus uh, with this Samaritan woman at a well. Um, it is Jesus' a prime example 
of Jesus crossing boundaries. He has actually been in Judea, which is familiar Jewish territory for him, and he's going to go to Galilee, we hear. And he could have gone around Samaria, he could have gone around this enemy territory, but for some reason, Jesus goes through Samaria. The Samaritans and the Jews, as you probably know, were not two groups of people who thought very highly of one another. There's a lot of animosity and, and distrust and even hatred. But Jesus goes through Samaria to get to Galilee. I think this is an example of how Jesus is not a fan of social distancing. He's like the opposite of social distancing. He is going to do everything he can to connect people, even people that the rest of the world or society would say should not be connected. Um, a, lot of, a lot of stories have been told about this woman by the well, this Samaritan woman. Um, a lot of it's not true, it's not in the scripture. Um, we don't really know much about her story. Um, Jesus knows her and knows about her, and that's enough for us. For Jesus knows these things about her. She uh, is not threatened by him. He kind of asks her for something to drink. And then, uh, then this conversation ensues where he reveals um, how much he does know and care about her. Um, she has had several different husbands. We don't know the story behind that. She may have been a widow several times. Um, and she runs back. She clearly has some influence and power in her community because her testimony alone is all that's needed to, to kind of convince an entire Samaritan village and maybe all of Samaria to begin following and worshiping Jesus. The point of this is not really on her, it's on Jesus and his ability to overcome these boundaries. He's, he's crossing a boundary by speaking to a Samaritan as a Jew, but also in open, broad daylight, we know it's noon, it's a, a strange man approaching and addressing a woman, which at the time would have been uh, crossing another boundary. She asks him eventually for this water. He says, I, the water that I give is living water. You will never go thirsty. And she naturally and understandably wants to know, especially if this somehow means she's not going to have to continually return to this well uh, that had meant so much to her, her village, and her people. Wells uh, back then where we don't really have too much to compare to. They were places where people obviously needed water. Uh, there, were no, there was no plumbing, there was no running water. People had to return to a well to get this vi vital source of life. Um, but it was also a communal place, a place where people's stories overlapped on a regular daily basis. Um, the fact that she's there by herself is a little odd. It's probably unusual. But the point is, she's not alone because Jesus shows up and, and, and there is a community there as long as Jesus is with her. Um, I kind of think of a well as a, like a pharmacy counter, a counter where you might go pick up medicines, especially if your life depends on it. You kind of have to go there on a regular basis. The other day, I had to pick up a, a prescription for one of my children who was sick and who got better, uh, but I had to go, it was late night, I had to go to one of the few 24-7 uh, pharmacies over um, in the west end of Richmond. As I sat there waiting for them to full, uh, fill the prescription, I was surrounded by all kinds of different people who were all needing this this vital um, stuff in the middle of night. And I just kind of thought to myself, if my life depended on coming here, I bet I would get to know these people after a little while. It wouldn't take too long for me to, to start to learn more about their stories and, and them about mine. But that's what a well was like. And she wants to know, how is Jesus this kind of well? How, how is he giving this water? I think there's two ways, mainly. I think, first of all, we know that water is good for all living things. All living things depend on water in some way. And Jesus is for all people. This story shows this on multiple layers. But Jesus is not for one group of people. His love, the love lifted up in his body when he dies on the cross for the life of the world, is for all people. It crosses all boundaries. It is not something that when we feel it, we can stockpile it, or we can just keep it privately to ourselves. If we are doing that with God's love for us, then it is not Jesus' love. 
Jesus' love is like water. It is good for all things. I think secondly, he says that he's living water. It's like running water, not a stagnant pool or um, a little bottle, a plastic bottle of water you might drink uh, during um, a time of social distancing or when you don't have access to water. Jesus is living water, kind of like God's irrigation system for the whole universe. It's constantly flowing. Uh, the love that Jesus provides for us is constantly going. It's never static. I think some of the oldest people in this congregation have shown this to me. Um, some of them in their 90s still able to be with us almost every Sunday. Uh, the way that they talk about their faith reveals a source that never runs dry. They, they don't participate in church and church life because it's old-time religion or just habit that makes them feel comfortable. It is in their words I hear them talking about a faith that is like running living water. The other year we did a small promotional video for our faith formation programs and we interviewed just people around the congregation very randomly. We didn't tell them we were spring this on them. And there was one of these members, she's in her mid-90s, and she was sitting in her role later, and I focused the camera on her and I said, why don't you tell us uh, real quickly what faith formation means to you here? And she said, without even hesitating, she said, I've been coming here since 1954 and I learned something new every day. I felt, what a testimony to the living water of Jesus, constantly flowing, never stagnating, always leading us forward in service and love to the life of the world. And that is true, because God never stockpiles his love for us. God never squirrels it away or hides it away where people can only access it if they know the secret code or the secret creed or the secret church. It is out there. Jesus, for the life of the world, give us this living water always, O oh Lord. I can't help but think that this lesson, this gospel lesson, is perfectly timed for today. When so many of us probably start to feel alone, we're feeling a little isolated, a little bit nervous about what the next days and weeks may bring. We're not used to being so uh, on our own. We'd like to gather with our classmates, our workmates, the people in our congregations and in our communities. What a blessing to know that with Jesus one is never alone. He shows up with his living water. We always have access to his love no matter where we are. We can read scripture. We can share love with those in our families. And just on the other side of this door here, members of our congregation are assembling bags of food that will be distributed through one of our ecumenical partners to school children in our community this week. For this is the living water, Jesus Christ, who never expires because he lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 We are God's people through our baptism into Christ. And living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together.
strengthen our voice as we give witness to Jesus and inspire our service and our actions so that all may see you at work in the world you love. and your whole creation in the midst of this bleak wilderness of pandemic and in every kind of worry and suffering. Send a tidal wave of grace to wash away our fear and to replenish us with trust and your promise never to forsake us. weak immune systems and respiratory illnesses, for those who might suffer from loss of employment, those who are uninsured and the food insecure, migrants and refugees and those who are homeless and those who must travel. Be with parents looking after their children. Bless the work of our medical community and all who work in health care, scientists, pharmacists, our community and business leaders all who work in this time to care for those who are in need. against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father.
the Son, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, in the name of the Spirit, the three in one, the three in one. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Lift his countenance upon you. Lift his countenance upon you. God's blessing go with you. God's blessing go with you. And give you peace. And give you Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.